There's an old recording engineer adage that says, always get the sound right at the source. And regardless of whether you're using a high-end preamp and a vintage microphone, or just starting out with some affordable gear, good microphone technique is the first step to getting it right at the source. If you're using a dynamic mic, such as the Rode PodMic, you most likely want to exploit the microphone's proximity effect to achieve that familiar broadcast radio sound. Proximity effect is the increase in bass response that happens as the mic gets closer to a sound source, and it's a characteristic of pretty much all directional microphones. Experiment with distances between 1 and 6 inches to find the sweet spot for your voice and microphone combination. An easy way to measure a good starting distance is to position your mouth three finger widths back from the end of the microphone, and then try moving back and forward and see how the sound changes and if there's a spot that you prefer. Be aware, though, that anything further back than 8 inches when using a dynamic microphone will start to sound a little thin and less direct because you'll begin to hear more room reflections in the sound. Here, I'm using a desk arm, which offers a lot of options for positioning, but if you prefer using a microphone stand, just make sure to get one that can support the weight of your mic, especially if you're looking to use it with the boom arm extended, in which case you may need a stand that has a counterweight. When you're addressing a microphone up close like this, one issue can be plosive sounds that are created by bursts of air from hard consonants like P and B hitting the microphone diaphragm. Some dynamic mics that are designed for speech applications, such as the Electrovoice RE20, feature a built-in pop filter designed to combat this problem, but depending on your voice and style of speaking, you may still find that you need to take some extra measures. A windscreen can offer a limited amount of help but simply turning a few degrees off axis of the microphone so you're speaking across the diaphragm can really make a difference. Here's an example. Paved paradise put in a parking lot. Paved paradise put in a parking lot. If you prefer to speak directly into the mic, then you'll need a pop filter. Generally, these come with either a nylon or a metal mesh screen but metal mesh pop filters such as the Stedman ProScreen PS101 are going to be more effective at blocking plosives and easier to clean than their nylon counterparts. A pop filter will most certainly be required if you're using a condenser microphone such as the Rode NT1A 5th generation, as condensers are much more sensitive to plosives than dynamic mics are. Here's an example of using a condenser with and without a pop filter. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. As you can hear, condenser mics will also pick up a lot more room sound, which will make your recording sound less direct. If your room is acoustically treated to minimize sound reflections, or if it's simply just a good sounding room, you can get away with using a condenser, but you'll want to keep a distance of more like 8 to 12 inches from the microphone to keep the sound balanced. It's also important to use a shock mount with a condenser microphone as they're much more susceptible to handling noise or vibrations from bumping your desk than a dynamic microphone is. Oh, and if you're using a condenser microphone, don't forget that they need phantom power enabled to operate. Turn it on via the plus 48 volt button. Once you've figured out your favorite distance from the microphone to use, you'll need to set the input gain of your preamp. The gain controls how sensitive the input of the preamp is. This is different from volume, as gain adjustments happen at the beginning of your signal chain, while volume adjustments happen at the end. To set your input gain, speak into your microphone with the intensity you'll be using when recording, and as you do, take a look at the input meter and observe where the meter peaks during the loudest parts of your speaking. If you're using an audio interface and it doesn't have a meter, you'll have to rely on the metering in your recording software. Adjust the gain control up or down so that the signal is peaking between minus 4 dB and minus 6 dB. If your gain is set too low, you'll end up with a poor signal to noise ratio and there'll be a noticeable hiss in your recording. While if you set your gain too high, your audio will clip and sound distorted and be unusable. Following these tips should yield a solid recording that'll give you a lot of flexibility when editing and doing post-production on your podcast. So let us know in the comments which tip helped you the most. I'm Andrew with B&H, and until next time, happy podcasting.